Lansky. Yeah, hi. Um, I was told to give you a call. My name is Joe Cryan from Elvis2001.net. I was hoping to be able to interview Mr. Lansky. I was given this number and said to call around this time to maybe set up an appointment to uh, be able to talk to him. Uh, where you at now, sir? I'm sorry? Where are you at? I'm in New York. Oh, you're in New York? Yeah, I wanted to do something over the phone. Mm -hmm. what, what do you have in mind, sir? Well, what I, what I, I have a, uh, an Elvis site, and I also have a large fan club with 358 members, and a lot of my interviews that I do go out to other fan clubs and um, different magazines like over in Europe and that. I've uh, interviewed a lot, probably a lot of your friends, Sam Thompson, Charles Stone, Dick Grove, and a lot of the other guys, Larry Geller, so I was hoping to be able to interview Mr. Lansky. Uh, man, any time, but right now you call me, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm real busy, but you give me another call. Uh, what's today, Tuesday, Monday, or what? Um, what is today? <laughs> Wednesday. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> You're just as bad as I am. <laughs> you call me in the morning, I, I, I'll talk to you. Okay, uh, another day? Um, tomorrow. What, what other day would be good, sir? In the morning, how about Thursday? Today is Wednesday, tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow then, about the same time? That'll be fine. I look forward to it, sir. I'm, I'm here real early. I get in the morning about 7 o'clock. Okay. And you hit me you know, early in the morning, we can't you know, get it over. Would you want it earlier than now? Huh? Would you like it earlier than the time now? Would you? Oh, yeah, it'd be fine early in the morning because I don't have that many customers. Okay, I just said, I, you know, I get confused by my the times. Yeah, so it's 10.30 now, it's two hours there. Uh -huh. So, okay, I'll call you about 9 o'clock my time. That would be 9, that would be 7 o'clock your time? That'd be fine, I'll be here. I look forward to it, sir. In the morning. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Yes, hi, is Mr. Lansky there? Yes, he's calling. Mr. Lansky? Oh, yeah, hey, how are you this morning? Hey, good, sir. Do you have time? Uh, yeah, let's hit on it. Okay, uh, I, I read in uh, a, a to Z a little bit about you, and, and I had actually I met you before, sir, when I was in Memphis. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you were born? And uh, born in Memphis. Born and raised in Memphis. Right. When did you open your store, sir? Uh, we opened in 1946, down on Beale Street, when we got out of the Army. Uh-huh. Then, uh, when was the first time Elvis walked into your place? Uh, I gotta get to that. Uh, okay. We had a uh, shop down on, when we got out of the Army, my father bought us a, a place down on Beale Street. And what it was, the ladies shop, and it had all second-hand clothing in there and things like that. After we walked in there, we know that was not gross, that was not deal. And we don't sell things like that. I've never been in the retail business before. But uh, as we went in there, we threw everything out of there. My dad paid $350 for the whole store. <laughs> so when we got through, we threw it all out, gave it to the garbage man, and we turned around and opened an army surplus store. <laughs> And after that, uh, when that went out, the uh, Army Surplus went out when it had a board in the market that we need high fashion merchandise. We were down on Beale Street, on famous Beale Street. A lot of people back there, all the ethnic people. And uh, had, they wanted something sharp, and they had a lot of bands and things that they used to play on the weekend and eat clothes and things like that. Wasn't nobody doing it. So that's when we got into it. And uh, Elvis was uh, working, when Elvis was working at the uh, did he worked at Lowe's Theater. He was an usher, and he used to come down on Beale Street and look at our windows. He used to fix the windows, sharp windows, you know, real way out windows. Uh -huh. Go to New York to see those beautiful windows and things like that. And you get an idea, you know what's happening. So uh, he used to walk, Elvis used to get, come out from uh, taking a break, and he used to go down on Beale Street looking at our windows from there. He went down to the, down to the church down, down on Beale Street. had a big church down there, and had gospel singers down there. And he used to go down and he'd sit in the back of the church and and, and, uh, and listen to him singing and things like that. When he got through, he came back up to Peel Street, going, you know, going back to the little street, going back to work. And he looked in, looked in. I didn't know who he was. And nothing. Only, that's the only white guy that ever been on Peel Street. <laughs> a lot of ethnic people come down there. And he walked and he went back up to, to Lowe's Theater. He'd come back again, looked in the window again. I didn't know who he was. And he kept on doing that. And I said, hey, I'm going to introduce this guy. He, so anyway, I introduced myself, and they told me he was Presley. I said, oh, that's fine. I said, come in, let me show you what I've got. And they looked around, and he said, ooh, no, this is fantastic. We have stuff. I said, yeah, right, it's right down your alley. He said, fine. So he walked out, and went back to the theater, and he came back the next day. And that was on a Friday, and he walked in, and he bought a shirt. He bought a shirt for, for 3 dollars And 
and uh, the next Friday he came back in and bought another one. And about two weeks later he came in and said, Mr. Lansky, Mr. Lansky. I said, what you need, Elvis? He said, I've got a contract. I'm, I'm going to be on there, uh, Ed Sullivan, Tommy Dawson, Jimmy Dawson in New York. i got to have some clothes. I said, that's no problem. When he looked at all my merchandise, first thing he said, he said, I don't have them. We told him, Elvis comes, I don't have no money now, so when I get rich, I'll buy a yacht. Wow. I said, don't buy me, I'll just buy from it. That's, that's when he came back in. Uh-huh. He had to have some clothes and go to New York, so put all his clothes out on the counter and everything. He liked it and everything. He said, I've got a problem. I said, what's your problem? He said, I don't have no money. I said, you sure in the hell got a problem, sir. <laughs> he said, I appreciate what you can do for him. I said, well, we'll take care of it, no problem. So we got them all finished up, but he had to be on, he had to be in New York, he had to be on Ed Sullivan, Tommy Dawson, Jimmy Dawson, and they do got kind of a hayride. So when he got through with that, I got it all his clothes and everything. He started paying me, paid me everything. His dad brought the money back up there. And from then on, that was my, that was my customer. And every time he come down, he would always look in the window. And I'd start getting some different stuff than, than anybody else had. I would cherry pick things because I know he had to have something different. And that's when I started picking out real sharp merchandise. I mean, real way out stuff. Right. Now, sir, did you make your own clothes, or did you buy? No, we we, we made our own clothes. Wow. As, as we went into it, we started getting into cut, make, and trim. We had piece goods that we make different kinds, different different uh, styles, and different things that nobody else had. We didn't, we want he wanted something different. Right. And I knew we had all the ethnic clothes, and I, you know, changed over, and we got it black and you know the ethnic, and also in, into. What Elvis was wearing, and then the, uh, people you see Elvis come out and say, where, where you get your clothes, where you get your clothes? Lansky Brothers, down on Famous Bill Street. Huh? Oh, man, that is sharp, man, that's real. Then, the, then the white kids start coming in, they want their stuff, and then we start, you know, putting their stuff in there. And all the merchandise, fine merchandise, but right then, and all at once, we start picking up on all these white young white kids. Because mm-hmm. they all wanted to look like Elvis. Yeah, I'm telling you, you better believe it. And then, then time, any, any way he went, Elvis was out to the art, man, for all over the world. He's well, all these pink and black, that's when I started putting them pink and black. And man, he liked it, and I put him in, in the three, three mirror, three-way three mirror and then turned his collar up. He went it uh, duck, duck tail on the back. He said, I don't mess my hair up, don't mess my hair up. Don't worry about it, it looked cool to be something different. Uh-huh. Uh, smiling, laughing, and, and all the ones. He started picking up on them, and that's what he wanted. Yeah. And everybody saw this, hey man, that's cool, man, I like that. So that's what it happened. Now, did you ever design clothes purposely for Elvis? Like you would oh, think yeah, that Elvis yeah. would like that, so that's designed, I mean, and his favorite colors were like pink and black and pink stuff. Pink and black and different colors, different different styles and things like that. That's what we started making. It was different. You know, the other is more than we would have to add to It's something that, that the white boys would wear. Right. Uh, uh, had those uh, peg of pants, peg pants and things like that we used to make for. Then made those short, short bolero coats. Uh, no back pocket pants we start making, you know, things like that. And he went, he went crazy for it. So it was different. Yeah. Nobody else had When he was on stage, he was on stage by himself because he had something different. Right. Rules and odds. Yeah. Did he uh, stay right up with you right until the, in the 70s? Did he keep coming back and buy clothes and stuff? He's always, he's, he always come back and buy clothes because he knew, he, he, knew, he, he knew what I knew that he, know, that he wanted. He wanted right. something different and we always try to keep something Special and something that we had uh, boats of cloth on our, on our, in the store. I mean, any piece of goods you want, mohair, silk and wool, and things like high fashion stuff. Right. Now, did you make it to where if you wanted to come in and, and look around, did you have to like make special hours when he got yeah, super we had big? Special hours. He called. We come in there sometimes two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. We were out at night, didn't have anything to do, and they come in the store, and we, you know, we picked out things, and I knew what you know to. to take care of him what he wanted with something different than right. anybody else got. I mean, he he was a belle of the ball because he had something cool and something different that was sharp. Ooh, man, that's real sharp, you know. Yeah. Everybody, oohs and ahs. Yeah, there'll never be another. No, you're right. And, you know, after I, I started with him, it's just like putting a key, uh, a key in and a lock. I had a made because the man knew what he what, what he could get. And then I made his delivery down to the down to, to play, uh, his home and things like that, dropped it off, picked up stuff. Uh-huh fixed everything up for him, he had it ready for him, used to go into the house, put, take it upstairs, put him on his bed, and have it ready for him when he got ready for it. And, you know, we had a, we had a good relationship. So you used to bring it you used to bring it upstairs in Graceland and put it on his bed? Uh-huh. I must say, if I didn't do it, my son used to run it up there or something like uh-huh. that. But uh, everything was fine. Wasn't it? No problem because I had, you know, I had, had what he wanted. He <laughs> had different things. That's, that was the beauty part. Right. He didn't want to see himself coming and going. 
And did you, uh, were you ever a guest at uh, Graceland? Or? I always go out there. I always went out there. The people, you know, the daddy, the father, and the mother, very, very good people. Real nice people. They're glad to see me. We're glad to see them. Just like a big family, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, how was uh, Gladys? Now, I mean, of course, she wasn't around very long, but... Oh, no, she was. She was a lady. Was she a nice lady? And when I used to take stuff upstairs, either I uh, and my son used to drop stuff off there, and come back downstairs, 4.30 in the afternoon or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, they were making breakfast, and I'd come back. She said, Mr. Lansky, she said, you want to stay and have uh, breakfast with us? I said, Gladys, I said, I'm on my way home. I said, my wife is making dinner for me. I said, if I eat breakfast here and I get home, man, I get chewed out. Oh, I can understand. No problem. <laughs> time you want, you just come on us. No problem. It's no problem. So uh -huh. that's the start. She was a nice lady. And the father, he was a dynamite guy. He, he's all right. You know, any time Elvis was going out on a gig or something like that, he always picked up three suits. Come get three suits. Get three more suits. You know, he had three more suits every time he turned around. He'd get three suits and go out on, when he ever go out on, on, on what do you call it? On, on, on stage or something. Uh -huh. Did Elvis ever, real, while he was there being, uh, looking for clothes. Did he ever really open up to you and talk about non-entertainment things or just things that were going on? Yeah, we, you know, we know, I knew, I knew how to talk to him and we, we used to be at each other and jive with him, man, you fantastic. You, <laughs> you, you, you fill him, you blow him up, you fill him up with real sharp stuff, but he, well, he was a good looking guy, the guy yeah. was good in his clothes. Now what else can you say? This is it, this is what you need, this is what it is, what's the happening, this is the happening. Yeah, and you couldn't ask for a better poster for your business. Yeah, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> and them kids used to come in, they used to find me to stand out in front of the store waiting on them to come. He wouldn't come, but he'd come, but they'd be out there waiting on them. And a lot of times you buy these, these guys something, buy shirts or pants or something like that. Did he? How fashion we had, and they wanted, you know. Well, in the beginning when he first got his clothes, did he ever take any, well, garbage because of the way he dressed? I mean, did anybody ever put him down in the beginning because of the way he dressed? Did he ever talk about that because he was so flashy? I mean, let's face it, he was flashy. For a white man, he was flashy. He was way out. He was, he was, he was in his own world. He wanted different. He wanted something that nobody else had, and that's what I had for him. I had what he wanted, and, and that's what really satisfied him. Because so he really turned around just without with just ethnic people buying from you. He brought a lot of white people in yeah, too. Yeah, but he did bring a lot because they were different. We made different styles. We made different patterns. We had different clothes and things like that. Did he ever come up with an idea for clothing? Oh, he always would. Well, we gonna change it. You know, whatever you go, you pop the whip. I'll make the trip. You know, <laughs> I mean, you paid for this. <laughs> you pop the whip. I'll make Nick the trip. I never heard of that before. You no, know, you, you pop the whip. I'll make the trip. Whatever you want. I always remember, money talk, bullshit, walk. There you go. Your joke. Uh, sir, when did you find out that Elvis had passed away? Ah, uh, we were in, uh, my son and I, and our uh, general manager, we were in uh, Dallas at the market buying merchandise, uh, peace goods and things like that. And uh, this lady, the waitress, come, have you heard, have you heard? I said, heard what? He died, Elvis died. I said, are oh, you bullshit? No, 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 he died. I said, oh, okay. And I got kind of worried. I said, we got to go home. And happened a big, uh, uh, highway patrolman walked in. Have y'all heard the news? Have you heard the news? Elvis died. I said, shit, we got to go, man. Let's get go. We went back to the hotel, got our uh, luggage, and we went through back to Memphis, went right to, to Graceland. Oh. And, and when I did, man, I mean, I couldn't believe it, I tell you. Man, the whole world mourned. Oh, unreal. You, you should have seen the funeral, man. Did it's, you go to the funeral, Mr. Oh, Lance? Definitely, definitely. I went there, and I was at the house, and I was taking care of people. I took care of, you know, you just go out uh, and get the car, go out and pick up uh, ice or, co or cokes or something, what they needed for the house. I went and got it and things like that. You know, if it showed or something, I wouldn't pick it up and things like that. Uh, I mean, I was close with him. I was real close with him. That was good. You know, he needed a friend. I uh, guarantee you need a backbone when he needed. Yeah. Um, did you uh, Did you ever get to see him live? Did oh, you yeah. ever see him perform many times? Yeah, sure. I sure did. But that cat was unreal. He was fantastic. Yeah. Sir, so did Jerry Lee Lewis or any, any of the other Sun people come in? Oh, and we, got, we had them all. That, that's what brought them in, Elvis. Elvis brought them in. So <laughs> all the rest followed. Ace man, man, he, he brought them in. Man, it, would they see it on here? They want it. They want, some, they want something different. Yeah, I was always a big Roy Orbison fan. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, and you, you name it, we took care of all of them. I guarantee you. Do, you. do you still see a big want for clothes that were styled after Elvis? All day long, all day. We we stay in the market. We got our own la own label. Uh, we got uh, our, our label, Lansky Brothers Clothing to the to the King. Uh -huh. We ship all over the world. 
We ship all, all the UK. We ship uh, Japan. We ship all over. Even we ship stuff into Elvis Presley uh, out of Graceland. We ship it to the e store. Yeah. Yeah. EPE, yeah. yeah. What do you think about the big takeover with Silliman? Ah, uh, just yes. Sit and wait, see what's happening. Yeah. It's a change, it's time for a change, you know. It was sometimes you need to, sometimes you need to. You go, you go so far, and if you don't change, it, it, then all at once, what happened, what happened? You know, we don't get the people, but you got to change. This man is a, he, this man is a dynamite man. He'll change it, he'll bring you something in there, It'll be something unreal. They're going to change the whole thing. They're going to they gonna redo the uh, Graceland and everything. Uh -huh. Two new hotels out there and everything. They're going to tear the hotel they got now. They're going to put two, four hundred rooms out there. They're going to put them across the street next to Graceland. It's going to be dynamite. It's going to be fantastic. I think so, too. I th yeah. It's got to be. It's got to be anything. And any time you don't make a change, you know what happened? Bye-bye, Jose. You get stale. It, exactly, exactly. That's what we do in our store. We change the route. Well, as, as, long as, they don't, as long as they don't touch the home, there shouldn't be a problem as long as they don't touch no, 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 Graceland. No, no, no. They, they're not going to fool the home. The home exactly. As is. As is. Yeah, they so that's work, the whole they thing. They don't work around the home. They're going to have mm -hmm. everything. You see, we just lost Charlie Hodge. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie's a nice guy. He, he's a fun guy. Was he? I think yeah. he was extreme. I think I would have to say that he was one of the closest to Elvis, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely, definitely. You Do know, you everybody, there's some guys out there, they should take care of them. They're out there, they're out for a good time, child. They like them, them uh, 19 and six packs. That's what they like. <laughs> like them chicks, man, unreal. But, you know, what can you say? You got 12 guys out there and you got to do something for them. You know, that's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, what do you call it? Security. But, you know, they never took care of me out there all of, you know, having a good time. Good time, Charlie. What can you say? Yeah. Mr. Lansky, I appreciate you doing this for me, sir. Okay. I'm going to put a link on my site to your store, if that's okay. Okay, so, be fine. You, you got my number? What? what you, got my, you got my address, haven't you? Uh, I can get it off of your site. I okay, can get, yeah, because I like to, get, if it's possible, can I write, send you a letter and I could get your uh, autograph? Would that be okay? No problem. Okay, I'll send you a letter, sir, and I'll put a link on my site to your site, and then I'll let you know when the interview is up on uh, on, on my web, okay? That'll be fine. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much, sir. If anything else you want, just give me a holler. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.